Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Today I want to start off with something that's really quite simple. It's called the Rule of Eleven. And it's something that I developed to talk about the first steps to construct all IB microeconomic diagrams. And in many ways, you could use this later on in macroeconomics as well, because many of the principles of building the correct diagram are embedded in this video itself. So the idea here is that when you get a question in microeconomics, a supply and demand question, um, a government intervention question, a price floor, a tax, a subsidy, a um, market failure question, you're always going to start with the same diagram and to embed those same ideas into your brain so that you are able to uh, remember where to start. Here's your basic microeconomic market diagram for product X. And there are 11 fundamental things that must be on this diagram in order to um, decide what you're going to do with the graph next. So what do I mean? Well, almost every microeconomic situation has an event. And one thing you want to do in your mind when you're looking at a question, especially headed towards the IB exam or any sort of IB exam inspired question, is to think about it in two separate parts. What was happening in the, pro in, the, in the market for product X before the event, and then what happened after the event? So what's the event? Well, the event could be a drop in income, so demand's gonna shift. It could be um, a hurricane so sh uh, that destroyed some factors of production, so the supply curve's gonna shift. It could be a tax, it could be a subsidy, it could be a floor, it could be a ceiling, it could be anything that you can think about in microeconomics that's going to create an event afterward. But the fundamental place where you start is almost always the same. And so I've developed this idea of a rule of 11. And so you read a question, you say, oh, okay, so this is a supply and demand microeconomic question. Um, draw the graph. Boom. Okay. So what are you going to include? There are 11 things. Here they are. One, price. Two, the currency you're going to use. Three, the initial price equilibrium. Four, zero, <laughs> five, Q1, which is the original equilibrium quantity. Six, the quantity of product X. Seven, the unit that you are going, that this product is being sold in, in this case, thousands. The time frame, in this case, year, that's now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, demand curve. I always tell students to call it D1. Supply curve is 10, so S1, and the title for the graph. That is 11 things, the rule of 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Done. Now that you've drawn a graph and you know that it's perfect, then you can think about the event that you're going to get in the question. Maybe the event's a hurricane that's going to destroy supply, the ability of factors of production, the ability to supply gasoline in the marketplace. Fine. So it's an inward shift, and then you do everything else off of that. But this rule of 11 is critical for you to understand where to begin. And if you mess this up, it's really, really hard to earn all the marks on the analysis, because if the initial graph is wrong, then your the shift of the curve or the change in the event is going to affect the the diagram in some way. But you've driven you've you've actually haven't drawn the correct diagram. Okay, so there is the rule of eleven. I think it's an an incredibly helpful thing for you to have in your mind. Um, the last thing that I always tell my students is for the initial price equilibrium quantity, call it P one Q one. Because if there's going to be, there's, a, there's always going to be, not always, but there's going to be a change in the equilibrium, the price and the quantity equilibrium, then make those P2, Q2. And likewise, just always make the first supply curve S1 and the second supply curve, I'm mean, sorry, the first demand curve D1. And then that way, you know, if something shifts, if D2 is obviously what happened after D1. And likewise, for the supply curve, the supply curve were to shift out to S2, great, or shift inward, fine, S2. You know what was the initial place. So all the ones will be the initial price, quantity, demand curve, or supply curve for the uh, question that you're answering. Good deal. Talk to you in a bit.